Joes. But I need to see them become more competitive, have some fight, some spirit. If they don't show that on the field, then it's, it's an indication that he's lost his team. Then you have to press the panic button. Oh, 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 time out, time out, time out. Let me get this straight. So Desmond Howard of College Game Day is ready to write Coach KT and the Merlin Turpins all after one loss. Yes, I get it. We blew a 14-point lead. Yes, I get it. That was completely on me. I take full responsibility for that loss. But what you won't do on college game day, which happens to be my favorite show, on national television, and, and insinuate that it might be time to hit the panic button for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How soon they forget? I guess I, I, guess I got to tell them, like, Roy Jones, y'all must have forgot what I did at Miami. Y'all must have forgot the successes I've seen at Michigan State for the one year I was there. Y'all must have forgot how I turned Navy around and made them a national power. Y'all must have forgot what I did at Illinois. Or if I found successes there and won Natty after Natty at every location I was at, what make you think I won't have the same success while I'm home? We gonna shock the world today in our city at Kinnick Stadium. Believe it. Hey man, we live, we lit, we in a place to be. You chilling with your boy, L-E-V, K.T, man. Hey, let's turn up one time for the one time. So this is the Home Again episode two. <sighs> I'm still trying to get over Home Again episode one. It, it ended in so such such sad fashion. But like I say, it was all on me. Um, that was week one. We're trying to restore a, viral, a rivalry with some of the teams that we used to play in the ACC. Uh, UVA is one of those teams. Merlin and UVA games are always big. We got our first conference opponent this week. We play our in our um, in the past uh, pre um, college football revamp. They will have Kirk Herb Street making these. Um, picks, but now they got got good old not so fast Mr. Lee Corso himself making these picks. He's going with Iowa um, based off of everything he probably seen week one. He has every right in the world to pick Iowa, but, hey, there's a reason why we play the game. And and, and, and like the great movie back in 98, any given Sunday. Well, in this case, any given Saturday. So I figured I'd give y'all a little slight change of pace. Um, I feel like that the video quality comes out so much better when I record the entire game. You all get to see the entire game. Of course, I do my intro, intro, and you you guys will see me for a quick second. But I really like a lot of the um, scenes that they have on the PC version of College Football with fans. And I feel like they added some things that uh, wasn't in the game previously, unless I'm just under a placebo. Uh, like um, one of the things I left in here was the halftime show, which I'm going to allow you to watch in its entirety uh, because I don't remember David Pollock being on the original uh, version of the game. I do remember Reese Davis and, of course, Lee Corso and, of course, Kirk Herbstreit, but I do not remember David Pollock being on here. It has been a nice touch today. They got Desmond Howard on here as well. Ready to play. Team has to be focused today, period. All right, so coming out, man. <clears throat> Second and 11. Get a pass to De Janeiro for about nine yards. Um, I really need to start running the ball more. Just getting ahead of the sticks. Try to get the ball to Jake Funk there. It's fourth and one. We're in Kinnick Stadium. I feel like I need to make a statement. Should have punted the ball here, but I didn't. Talia Tagovailoa. I was able to get uh, a first down on there. Running one of my favorite route concepts here, and it seems to always get me in trouble. That FPA over just gets me in trouble so much, but I really love it because when I get adequate blocking, it works. So coming to another one of my favorite plays, um, I got double wheel routes on one side. I got a post, and then on the other side, I got a dig. And I, I'm sorry, it was an end, and I just threw that incorrectly. So I got the ball, great field position. Look at look at Spencer Petras, first play, <laughs> getting jiggy with it. See the little cut right there, down to the uh, his first and goal at the three-yard line. And then here, <clears throat> I feel like in a big team you can always find good running backs, great offensive line, and Tyler Goodson was able to get in there. So down seven nothing, seven nothing at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa. We got to make something happen here. Let's see what we can do. My boy Nick DeGenario couldn't get nothing going there. I definitely need to add more plays to the repertoire. This bubble screen was a nice one. I caught him in the right defense. And uh, my boy Rakim Jarrett was able to make some make a play out of that one. 
I love scrambling. I don't know what it is. Uh, throwing on a run. And again, Rakim Jared. Jared is very underrated. I know I talk about Nick uh, DeGeneres a lot, but uh, Jared is very underrated. He's a freshman as well, so I got them two for years to come. Right here, I get a good look. Um, I feel like whenever you lose in NCAA and you struggle passing the rock, that next game you play, you're going to see a lot of press coverage. And Iowa was giving me a lot of zero coverage, daring a uh, Talia to beat them. We got first and ten here. And Tyler, good. Look at them. Oh my God, Tyler Goodson was running like a man possessed. Really had a lot of struggles trying to stop him. Tyler Goodson again. <laughs> Extremely difficult to stop. Got a second and five here. Tyler Goodson on the carry. Finally, we was able to get him for a tackle for loss. Like I said, I'm a, I, I, I like my defense. They haven't showed up this season so far, but, you know, I like them. I like the players I have. I have some youth, uh, youthfulness in, in key spots right there. Uh, Spencer Patrick has got way too much time. You get that much passing time. It's just slim pickings. It really is, and everybody know about the comeback, comeback glitch. First and goal, five yard line, easy. Spencer came out not playing, and I knew that offensively this game may end up being a shootout, so I was gonna have to get as many points as possible and minimize the turnovers. So now 14-7, let's see what we can do. My man Trouble Funk, nice little carry there for roughly eight or nine yards. Let's go second and 10. That's it, getting a lot of press coverage. And if I see that, I don't believe your corners, especially your slot corners, will be able to cover Nick DeGenario. And I don't think any corner can can uh, cover Rakim Jarrett. Oh my God, did you see the move? Talia, it's crazy. Uh-oh, let's go. That's what we needed right there, and I feel like we couldn't get that play against UVA. I know I cost the game off uh, offensively, but defensively we just couldn't make any plays. I made a uh, made an error there. I actually took my safety out where he was supposed to be. It looks like we covered the ball. He was clearly down, so it's first and ten for Iowa. Nearing midfield, mm, quick slant there. Like I said, Spencer is just tearing us apart. Only mistake he's made so far is when he got blitzed and didn't quite get the protection that he needed. Got third and five here. Pivotal play. Ah, four for two. I've always been a fan of, you know, punt safe. Let's get this ball back on defense. When I'm in that scenario, and like I say, um, I I don't consider Talia uh, a, a, a mobile quarterback, but I think he's mobile enough. Like I said, this is just another scenario where I felt like I had to be aggressive because I knew I needed points. Four for three on territory. Should have punted the ball, but I felt like I needed to go for it. And there you are. We're starting to see a lot of that. Zero coverage. And I'm just allowing my players to make plays. Right there, we got Deshaun Jones. Catch. 36 here. Another, another pivotal play. And once again, favorable coverage. I, I like my receivers. I don't care who I'm playing. I like my matchup, period. So now we have 14, 28 to 14, uh, right before halftime. Spencer Petras is going to try to uh, get this ball down the field and possibly get some points on the board before half. Too much time right there. That's, that's some pickings, man. Got to get more pressure on the quarterback. From the 44 yard line. First down. I'm playing once again my, my famous soft coverage. And I just couldn't make a play on the ball. And I feel like because I've been playing Madden a lot, my user skills are nowhere where they need to be. And I, like I said, Tyler Goodson. That's his third tutty of the day. He's just killing us. 28 21, 46 seconds left. I know I get the ball after half, so my mindset is I'm not trying to turn the ball over. But if I see an opportunity to get points, I'm going to be aggressive. Great play right there. Second and two. Like I said, they playing a lot of that close-up coverage. And I'm just trusting my receivers to make plays. If that's an accurate throw. That's a touch. That's a touch now. Look, they just keep playing press coverage. They're like begging me 
to throw the ball over the top. And I like my receivers. I'm right there. That was actually a pass that I should have probably passed it, laid on the inside and drilled, but I lobbed it. But luckily, Nick DeGenero was able to make a play on it. And this was dangerous right before half. It could have almost scored on that. That was just bad on my part by not playing, man. Um, so here's I'm going to allow you all to watch halftime in this entirety. I'm not going to even say anything. I'll be back right after halftime. Glad to have you with us in the studio for the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Chris Davis and David Pollock here completely locked in on that first half. Dueling virtuoso performances by both offensive coordinators. I usually like to give the helmet sticker on college football final for okay. players. Yeah. Players. For players. You breaking the rule here? I might. I mean, sensational play calling by both of these guys with the headsets up in the booth. I'm sure they'll be so honored to win one of your stickers. They I should be. They might even wear it on their visor next week on the sideline, but it would inspire them. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty nice to be dialing up everything and uh, it's pretty nice to be in the rhythm and the flow and everything seems to be working perfectly. And I, I imagine this is how offensive coordinators go from offensive coordinators to head coaches because they put everything together at the perfect moment at the perfect time and you go, okay, that can't be stopped. And right now, that's what it looks like. Just about ready to start the second half. We're going to watch all the games around the country, including some coaches who like to sample the surface that they're playing on. I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, I'm going to go to the cafeteria. You want some turf? Some asher turf or anything? Yeah, if they've got some, I'll chew on that in the second half. Here's the second half for you to chew on with Brad and Kirk. So I thought that was a nice touch. Um, that's why I, I felt like I had to record it. If that's something y'all interested in seeing more of, let me know. I could just start let, letting that uh, halftime play in this entirety. All righty, we got the key 35 here trying to get a stop. <laughs> that was a hell of a throw by Spencer. There were some really nice passes he made. And even uh, Ben Mobile, he was able to make some plays as well. Just way too much time. That's my... A soft coverage I like to play. <laughs> Luckily, was able to. Uh, I was hitting the strip, uh, the strip uh, ball button there a lot, and was able to get one. Once again, press coverage. I like my receivers. See what we can get. <laughs> wow, terrible throw. <laughs> but Degenero was able to make a play on it, and there we go. We up 21, 42. The 21 after that play, it was just nice to be able to put up points, get a lead, prove the haters wrong. The haters, uh, and I don't want to call Desmond Howard a hater because he was just making the observation, but it was nice to be able to get through this game, win this game. I think we scored seven more points. I was able to score like 17 more points. Um, didn't want to waste you all's time. So it felt good to get a win, man. It felt really good to get a win it was a much needed win especially in big 10 country these big 10 games mean so much and i feel like if we can go week by week taking everything a game at a time and we can uh run the table we do have a chance to be in the college football playoff there's a utility tool that they have for ncaa um so the top eight teams by bowl week uh based on the uh, bcs i'm not gonna even do it committee style so the top eight teams will be in the college football playoff as i always like to say do something nice with somebody you normally wouldn't do always pay it forward peace and love peace and blessings and until next time one